Okay, wow. Looking quite blocky today, aren't you? In this video we're gonna run Tomb Raider, the 2013 reboot, on a potato PC and I'll show you how you can improve the performance if you also have an absolutely terrible PC while also returning Tomb Raider back to its 1996 roots in a way. So let's begin! For the video, I'll be using my Super Soul Lenovo IdeaPad 115iBY laptop which has the dual core Intel Celeron Entry 840 Intel HD graphics Bay Trail and 4GB of RAM. I initially ran the game using the low settings of course, in combination with the 800x600 resolution. At first I thought, oh this isn't that bad, right? I mean it's only 20fps which is pretty underwhelming especially for a well optimized game like this one, but hey, at least it's playable, until I went to a CPU intensive area and the FPS went to crap. So yeah, we should definitely get to work. The configuration for Tomb Raider 2013 is located in the registry editor which you can find by searching Reg Edit in the start menu search bar. In the registry editor we're gonna go to HK current user, software, crystal dynamics, Tomb Raider, graphics where the config is located. The first value that we will take a look at is the render API one which as the name says controls the API on which the game runs. Changing the value from 0 to 9 makes the game run in DirectX 9 instead of the default DirectX 11 slash 10 API. For comparison regarding the performance between DirectX 11 and DirectX 9, I run the built-in benchmark mode using both APIs. In DirectX 11, I got an average of 21.7 FPS, minimum FPS of 15.5 and maximum FPS of 26. In DirectX 9, the average and maximum FPS were basically the same but the minimum FPS were lower, indicating some instability, which means that on this laptop the X11 is the better performing API. But if you have a really old graphics card from like the late 2000s for example, running the game in DX9 can be beneficial, so in that case I would recommend experimenting a little bit to find out whether the default API or DX9 performs better on your PC. Anyway, moving on. There is also the best texture filter value which if you set from 1 to 0 you can disable the texture filtering so the textures would look a little bit blocky. If you want to take it to the next level however, pay attention to the texture quality value which if you increase from 2 to 10 you can make the game look like the original Tomb Raider 1 from 1996. See, this is the reason why I love making these videos. Still no trying on boobs though. If you want to run the game at below the lowest allowed by default resolution of 800x600, you can change the full screen width and full screen height values to say 640 and 480 respectively, make sure it's in decimal for 640x480 for example. However, if you try to run the game at below 800x600 using exclusive full screen, you will get a failed to initialize direct 3D with current settings error, so make sure to untick the exclusive full screen option from the settings in the launcher first. And it's not just with 640x480, it also works with other crappy resolutions. Nice. An alternative way to play it below 800x600 is using windowed mode and well, reducing the size of the window just like that. Yes, that's the smallest we can make it though. Also make sure to press the apply button after making the game window smaller even if the button for apply is grey, otherwise you will get a closing this menu will discard all changes message and the resolution will revert back to 800x600 if you press yes. I run the benchmark mode at 640x480 in both non-exclusive full screen and windowed mode and strangely enough in full screen without exclusive the result was actually worse than at 800x600 with the stock low settings using full screen with exclusive, while in windowed mode there was a big improvement with an average of 29 fps. 
In fact, in the most intensive areas of the game, the CPU seemed to struggle more in full screen without exclusive at 320x240 compared to in Windows at 640x480. Well, I guess that's what happens when you try to run this game on a processor that is so slow that it bottlenecks its own integrated graphics. But if you have an actual CPU and not a piece of crap that can't compete against 2006 Core 2 Duos but a really weak GPU, you could very well get away with playing at a potato resolution in full screen. My personal recommendation for this cell run would be to right click on your desktop, then go to display settings. From there, go to advanced display settings, display adapter properties, list all modes, and choose the lowest 640x480 option if you hopefully have it, then click OK and apply. Now, return to the normal display settings and lower the desktop resolution just a little bit to 640x400. Finally, we turn back to the game and maximize the game window. And with the 8 bit textures and the maximized windowed mode using the desktop resolution of 640x400, we got a very impressive average of 35 FPS in the benchmark mode. There is also a noticeable performance improvement in less demanding areas. While yes, there are still a few issues in CPU intensive areas as to be expected from this Celeron, the game runs better now. And yes, these graphics look horrible, I know, in fact at this point I'm not sure if I would recommend playing with these graphics or just sticking to the original Tomb Raider from the 90s. Using the tips shown in this video and a CPU that's just a little bit faster than the Entry Rate 40, you can likely get the Tomb Raider reboot to run smoothly on some really, really weak graphics cards. That's all for this video. I'm sorry if I harmed your eyesight, but well, that's my job on this channel, to show you guys what you can do to play games on a low-end PC. If your eyesight is still fine and like mine, we sure it sucked even before making this video anyway, then you can also check out the featured video where I run GTA 5 smoothly on this exact same potato laptop, albeit with insane sacrifices of course. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, it's been my pleasure, and I wish you all the best!